Imagine for a moment a crowd of people headed in different directions, doing different activities. As usual, human nature. People are moving in different directions, trying to find a living, trying to, to make a living, trying to find yourself, trying to find a job, trying to, you know, have children, anything. Normal human activity. But in the midst of the crowd, there are a lot, there is a particular people who are wailing, who are suffering, who are being killed, who are whose blood are flowing. But everybody is passing by them without a blink, without looking to say, oh, what can we do to help? In fact, they are the people in the crowd who even feel like nobody notices them. They feel invisible. And they have even taken it as their faith to just keep suffering. That's the way I see the male gender in society. Any society at all. We have a whole lot of people speaking up for the male, for the women, for children. But the men seem to be the gender that gives me kind of a concern. I've had this concern since when I was a teenager. And I look at it and I look at how society is going and I'm afraid. I don't know if you're afraid, but if you want to know why I think that we need to have this conversation, I have five reasons for you. If you are interested, then don't go anywhere. Welcome back. I'm so excited that you think that this conversation is worth it, right? I have had the privilege of speaking up for men and um, delving into their world, discussing with them. Of course, we live with them. You know, I have a father, I have brothers, I have friends. And five things stand out why I decided to become a men empowerment blogger. Five reasons why I think that men should be catered to. Number one, men are humans. Yes, humans need support. Humans need to be heard. Humans all have peculiar circumstances. We all have the same experiences, male or female. There's nothing, apart from our biology and the things that come with it, there's nothing different between a male emotion and a, woman, and, and a woman's emotion. There's nothing different with, you know, um, how a, a man is supposed to be supported as against how a woman is to be supported and all of that. So I think that because men too are humans, I think that we see them as superhumans, they can figure things out. It shows in the way we raise boys. It shows in the way we raise you know, we, we raise them permissively, almost. And then when they grow up, then all of a sudden we stand up and start demanding certain things, which are just, we just have to do, with, they are taking the responsibility for their finances and their acquisition. Not because we want them to be full humans who are fully developed in their emotion in every aspect of their lives. Men are humans and they deserve support as well. I know that some school of thought think that men all have it all, all, all going, all, you know, but they, they make it look like people, Men are born empowered. Men come custom made, factory fitted with wisdom, knowledge, and power. They come with respect. They come with all that. Forgetting that we are culturized them, we socialize them differently from the way we raise the other humans who we are. All right? Number two, reason why I think that men need support. Men have been neglected for so long. So long, and we can see the repercussions. We can see the repercussions. When it comes to men's health, some societies don't even talk about it at all. We see women's health. Yes, we birth children, we have peculiarities, but men too have peculiarities. You know, this men's health have been so neglected that it looks like we are even glamorizing widowhood. We want men, we, we see them on the gender that don't mean anything. They can come, you know, we put expectations on them when it has to do with providing finances and all of that. And when they want, they can die and we women can continue living. That's almost how cruel I think the cycle is. We have neglected men's health of our own peril, right? We, an average man, African man I know, at least from my continent, will hardly take himself to the hospital. Very few men do that. We'll hardly go to the hospital just because I want to check myself. I want to, you know, have checkup. I want to see if something is wrong. Most times when you see a man in the hospital, he was brought in on emergency. I've done my research and we, it, that's because they grew up already feeling like they are not the ones that are supposed to be cared for. 
who needs pampering. They even think that going to hospital is pampering is for women and children, and they see that's something that weak people do. Meanwhile, that is the height of weakness. Not being able to accept help, being acculturized and socialized to think that you know you don't mean too much, but you are is intimidated to them to mean that that is strength. I think that we need to sit down and discover and, and realize that men have been neglected for too long and the repercussions are showing. We have a lot of schemes, grants, stuff for women who is given men. So we have we are we have more and more men not being able to even live up to the expectation that we so-called have given them. And we have a lot of men weakened because they have also tied their humanity and their masculinity to being able to provide just finances. We have excused them from parenting. We think it's fine when they don't come for PTA meeting. We think it's fine when, you know, when they can't sweep their own houses, they, can't, they don't know what's happening in their domestic environment. Most men. We have neglected men for too long. And the perils are showing. My third point, the third reason I think that we need to stand up and do something fast is that marriages are collapsing like a pack of cards. <laughs> Every minute, even as I'm talking to you, thousands of marriages are quit, are, are getting extinct. Are, are, people are dissolving marriages left, right, and center. And let me shock you: more women than ever before are the ones throwing in the divorce notes. That is saying, I don't believe in your leadership. So more and more men are afraid, threatened, confused, not knowing where to go in this thing called the marriage institution. And we are keeping quiet. Which kind of voice have we raised? Which kind of homes are we creating with these broken homes everywhere? Which kind of next generation are we raising? Marriages are becoming a joke because men are filling the blanks. Number four, when we educate men, empower them, support them, women and children will be safer in society. They will be a more empowered. They will have more empowered fathers more empowered husbands, supportive spouses and husbands, and society will be stronger. Any society that neglects men is already in trouble, and we can see the chaos all over. The fifth reason why I think men are important that we should do something fast. If we are able to educate men, give them succor as human beings that they are, society will be less risky. Why are you afraid as a woman to go out in the night because a, a man who is homeless might be locking on the streets and when he sees you he might just be to pounce on you and take your bag and take whatever it is that you have because he may not have eaten all day and nobody cares society will be safer our politicians will be people who are empowered from the home front if you cannot leave your home you cannot leave a society if women can can have more supportive spouses, educated, uh, educated spouses, more women will rise up to politics because we need more women in politics. But that can only happen when women in themselves are not so delighted that they are marginalized and men themselves understand the education that men and women make a healthy society. That comes from educating the mind, the reorientation. We need a total overhaul about how we think about the male gender. Men have been left to themselves a long time. I'll bring this conversation again, and if you're keen, read the description and see what I've been doing about men empowerment since 2016.